everybody, it's Pat Jones here for my friends at Aqua Trolls, and we're doing Turf Zoom. We're zooming in at some people around the industry that have great things to say, and our, our good friends at Aqua Trolls. And today we're with Jim Osborne from TPC Craig Ranch. Jim, how are you? I'm doing fantastic, Pat. How hot is it in Dallas right now? Uh, we haven't quite hit peak summer yet, but it's definitely here in the last, uh, after a slow spring, it's in the last couple of weeks, we've started to hit mid 90s and even touched 100 once so we're we're pretty well in full stride with the dallas summer so you you actually uh started out uh life up at, at iowa state and, and we're, we're used to to a uh, cool season turf what is it like being a golf course superintendent at a course in dallas in the middle of summer yeah you know ever since i finished uh, finished my school there at iowa state I, i've been in the southern southeast united states and in texas here you know growing bent grass so it's hard to remember those days of cool season turf um, but uh, you know I had always told myself if I was really going to get serious about this business that I, I probably needed to get in the southern United States it's a, it's a little bit more of a of a hotbed for for the golf industry so you know I've, I've been down here and I'm somewhat acclimated to it now Right. What's your what's your favorite thing about being a superintendent? You know, I think everybody has that thing that that keeps them coming back to this crazy job. What is that for you? Sure, sure. Yeah, you know, it's always been for me, and in, in, in the challenge of it. You know, I always tell folks that that uh, you know, I jokingly tell members and, and GMs and things that if uh, if I ever tell you the golf course is perfect, it's probably time for them to start looking for a new golf course superintendent. Right. You know, while I say that jokingly, I, I kind of mean it because I think if I ever, you know, run into a day where I'm not challenged, you know, it's time to start thinking about doing something different. And, you know, I've been doing this since I was 16 years old and never hit that mark. So, uh, you know, I think that's the best thing about it is there, there's always something different. There's always something to keep you engaged and, and you know, keep your mind sharp and your body sharp. So you know, I, I think that's what does it for me. A couple of years ago, uh, I interviewed Armin Suni, you know, the recruiter, and, and he was a former superintendent. And he, and he said, when the day comes when you start driving past things that you would have never driven past when you were younger, it's time to reconsider your career. And I always thought that that was kind of the opposite of what you were saying. So, sure. so, so speaking of opposites, what, what's the least favorite part? What's the part that, that makes you go, why do I do this every year? Well, it, you know, and, and I thought, you know, and I've thought about that before and, you know, what are, and I, I just don't have a lot of downside to this. A lot of, you know, people that I work close with, they think I'm crazy because I'm out here running around 730 at night. And, but this is my hobby. This this yeah. is what I do. This is what <laughs> I enjoy. And so even when I'm not working, I enjoy being around it. You know, I, I just, you know, sometimes the worst thing about it's the sun setting at the end of the day, you know, because I got to go home. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I just, there's, that's, you know, that's another reason I love it is there's not, a, there's not much about it where I, I look back at the end of the day and be like, yeah, I really wish I didn't, you know, I didn't have to deal with that or go through that. And um, so, you know, I don't, I can't complain about it very much. Well, that's great because because you got to be passionate about this because you're never going to get rich and you're never going to get famous and you know you're never going to get elected to some big thing because of it. It's it's just what we do. So so here we we've gone through now three months of, of craziness. Uh, wh what have you learned from the pandemic? What have you guys changed or or have there been th things you've had opportunities to do that you maybe didn't have an opportunity to do before because of the uh, the interruption? Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely been a wild time, and, and unlike anything any of us have ever seen, uh, I think the biggest thing that, not necessarily that I learned, but was swiftly reminded of is is how creative we can be as a as a group. Uh, not just not just golf course superintendents, but you know, you had GMs getting in the mix, you had golf professionals getting in the mix, food and beverage directors. Everybody had to figure out, you know, how do we adapt to this? How do we overcome this? And and keep our facilities, um, you know, up and running. Um, and I think the other thing that we were reminded of is just how important the product that we put out here every day is to people. Uh, you know, our, our round count, we were one of the, we stayed open, you know, here in Texas, the golf course stayed open pretty much the entire time. You know, obviously we, we were operating differently, but, you know, I think that, 
you know, I said it to our general manager way back when we were kind of in that gray area of what's going to happen, what's the fallout going to be. I said, hey, we owe it to people to stay open as long as we can because it was one of the outlets that folks had um that was safe you know what i felt was safe as long as we handled things the way we we're supposed to handle it so you know it kind of reminded you just how you know it's like you said you're never going to be rich and famous but you can really feel good at the end of the day knowing you provided this this outlet to people you know during a time that was you know kind of mentally taxing i think on a lot of folks yeah i agree Do, are there things that you changed as part of the you know experiment that you're going to stick with like a lot of people aren't going to put water coolers back out anymore or maybe uh, ball washers are there some of those things you're going to adopt as ongoing policies you know to, to be very honest with you pat we we have somewhat gone back to business as normal here um you know we put rakes back out we put water coolers back out now we provide sanitizer to folks and we still sure. give folks the option of you know we still give fo folks the option option of you know, not using those things if they choose to, but, um, you know, we've, for the most part here at our facility, we've somewhat just gone back to the norm. You know, we, we yeah. allow folks to ride by themselves. So, you know, we, we're letting people make their own decisions and yeah. how they want to handle it and, and provide the resources so that no matter what decision they make, um, you know, they can still enjoy their time out here. And I, and I think that's a lot of how a lot of people have adapted around the country. It's, it's been a little bit different everywhere. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think I think that some people do look at this as an opportunity to to make some changes and to streamline things and maybe make some changes in their team. But you know what? If you don't need to, you don't need to. Right. Right. I, I think the most important thing is, you know, we're, we're still learning a lot about this, this, this animal we're dealing with. Um, but we've educated ourselves into, you know, we're, you know, if, if a, a gentleman or, or a lady is, is older and they, you know, they don't feel comfortable riding yeah. in a cart with somebody or they don't feel comfortable, uh, you know, uh, using the bunker rake and that sort of thing. Great. Let them, you know, let them do as they please. And, and we just try to provide every, you know, provide it from every angle that we can, you know, to protect folks that need to be protected. Yeah. They want to be so so when you look back at, at, at this crazy business that you've been in who is the person that influenced you the most was it a mentor was it a relative who is that person that really uh, uh has helped you well and i don't want to sound cliche here but you know i look back to my parents they they have supported this thing through and through you know helping me get through school and and, you know, even when I was a little boy, you know, I was eight, my brother was six, and dad went out and got us a paper route when we were that age and, you know, kicked us out of bed at five o'clock in the morning to go deliver newspapers through the, you know, snow up to our rear end in Iowa. Right. So, you know, I think it developed a lot of work ethic. And, you know, I was raised in a home where both my folks, you know, kept the same job for 30 years. And, you know, mom was a teacher and dad was uh, worked on the railroad for 30 years. So, you know, just seeing that consistency and the work ethic and, you know, the stick to it, um, you know, I think that really molded me from from a young age to be, you know, to help with the persistence that this business requires. Yeah. Um, and then I've had, you know, I've had numerous superintendents along the way that really helped me. I spent my first six years out of school with Lee McLemore down in, in Alabama, yep. Central Birmingham, and, and kind of really cut my teeth there. And, you know, the it's funny. It's, it's like your parents teaching when you're young, you know, you, you, you hate them for it. Um, and they, they drive you nuts, but then you look back on it, you know, 10 years later and you say, well, you know, I really took a lot out of there and, you know, you know, probably need to go back and tell those folks, you know, thanks for what they did. That's exactly right. It's all about perspective. So, so when you, when you think about the relationship you've had with Aquatrols and, and I've, I've worked with Aquatrols in one form or another for years, I was on their board of directors years ago and they, they asked me to kind of reach out to folks like you and say what does that relationship with the company meant you know yes it's wedding agents yes it's now redox things like you know uh, the chemical products they've added but what's it meant for you as a prof as a professional to have them in your life well you know i think it's it's the diversity that they provide and the support they provide you know in the, in the product line is is you know, helpful in so many different, we're, we're growing zoysia grass fairways here. We're growing 
Bermuda rough, Bermuda tea and bent grass greens. And we're doing all that in, we're, you know, we're doing all that in Texas heat and a lot of times drought, you know, I think the faucet's pretty well been turned off over here and being able to go to that portfolio and, and, you know, we use different products in different areas um, to help us be successful. So, you know, I, I think it's being able to kind of look at them as a, you know, I can, I can pull this tool or pull that tool and, and use it here in this, in this particular environment to help me be successful. So um, I, I think that's the biggest thing for us. You know, we're not just, okay, we're using one of their products and, and that's what's doing it for us. I mean, we're using multiple things in, 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 in different turf areas and different soil conditions and, and having them be successful for us. So, yeah. I think, you know, that's, as a turf manager, that's, at the end of the day, if it doesn't work, we're not going to do it. And I've, I've used Aquatrol's products for a number of years now. And, and I've been at different golf courses. I've done some moving around here. Yeah. You know, I call it chasing the dream, trying to get myself <laughs> in a good spot. You know, and everywhere I go, it's a different environment. And we've had to take that product line and apply it a different way. And, and very rarely have we found an instance where we can't find something that works for our particular situation. Yep. I, I think, I think that that's from talking to people. That's the biggest thing these days. It's, it's not a one trick pony. You know, there's, right. there's, a, there's that full portfolio stuff and the people are, are, are great. And, and, yeah. and so, so, so kind of final thought, you know, as you, as you've moved up through this industry and now you're going to be hosting a PGA tour event here uh, uh, starting soon. Uh, what's your advice to young people coming into the business these days? Cause it's changed, you know, the, the traditional route of, of get a four year degree and be an assistant for a while and maybe move up kind of changed a little bit. So, so if a, a, a young person came to you and said, Hey, I'm interested in this, uh, what should I do? What would you tell them? Well, you know, I think the biggest thing that young people need to do is go out and experience it. I was, I was very fortunate in my time at Iowa state, um, to have some good connections into some internship work and you know get out there experience it um, make sure it's something you enjoy and then and once you have that figured out just be prepared and you know to forget about all the turf and that sort of thing um, get with you know be ready to be persistent yeah, I, I spent 10 years I came out right out of school in 05 and then went into set you know 2007 2008 and great time getting a, getting a superintendent's <laughs> job and uh getting a superintendent's job in three years was a pipe dream at that point and yeah you know, i spent 10 years and you know the other thing i think the biggest thing is learn how to develop your people skills yeah uh, you're not going to do the th you're never going to do the thing on your own um you got to be able to build a team and, and build that team up and and you know take care of them and develop trust with them and, uh, you know i the turfs you know it's it's we've all said it before but i don't think people necessarily believe the turf stuff is easy yeah you know you can find that in a book we have resources you know uh through our vendors and and our manufacturers and and we have all kinds of people around us that we can go to to get the turf stuff but there's no books there's no you know set of rules on how to deal with people and I, I think the you know, learning how to to interact with people, to motivate people, to um, you know have positive conversations with people, I think that's the part that's most difficult to yeah. to yep. kind of hone in. And and I don't you know I don't think in my lifetime I'll ever have that mastery. None of us probably will, because you know much like I said about the challenge of a golf course, there's also that challenge of of interacting with with people every single day and it's yeah. that's always something different that's always yeah. something different you know uh richie valentine or the, the famous superintendent at marion back in the day you know always said that communications was far more important than and yeah. I, I think that's something we can all agree on hey thank you so much for your time today. i really appreciate it i know you've been crazy busy getting ready to go into another summer and uh i can't thank you enough for making a few minutes uh for us to talk uh, about you and talk a little bit about aqua troll so uh, have a great day and enjoy absolutely pat thank you for having me on thank you see you soon yep take care